he's on fire, every bit of him. At this point, there's canned music and chanting in the background and screaming, which sounds like it's edited in, not like it's part of the images on the screen. The pilot, with his face covered with his hands, begins to walk around the small cage. Every part of him is on fire. The video is now edited in slow motion. Eventually, the pilot collapsed to his knees while leaning against one side of that cage, leaning forward. Finally, he appears to grab the cage bars with his hands. Then he collapses to the ground, still against the cage bars, into what I'd probably describe best as a fetal position. All right, folks, a very, uh, again, emotional description from Shepard Smith on the Fox News Channel of what happened to the Jordanian pilot at the hands of the animals uh, known as ISIS. Joining us now is Anham Chowdhury. Um, uh, welcome back. Uh, what's your take on what happened to that pilot? You approve of what happened to that pilot? Well, having seen the clip for the first time this morning, I can see that it has several intended effects. One of them, of course, is to terrorize the enemy. And I think it's had that effect. It's had a huge propaganda effect all around the world. Now, if you want to look at this from an Islamic perspective, what they are arguing is that it is kisas, in other words, reciprocation. The fact is that the pilots, not just this Jordanian one, but many others via drones and other bombing campaigns, have burnt a lot of men, women, and children, and indiscriminately. Obviously, we don't see the pictures or images of those because they're not available. But hundreds of thousands of Muslims have been killed, most of them by aerial bombardment in Syria and Iraq, and obviously before in Afghanistan. And what these people are saying is this is reciprocation. So they have a juristic argument uh, to retaliate in a similar manner. This is what Allah said in the Quran, fight them back the way that they fight you. But so, you don't right, so, okay, so, so ci civilized countries, even if I, let's, let's work on the premise that everything you said that has been done to them but is not shown is true. Let's work on that premise for, for the sake of argument. A civilized nation, when they capture a prisoner of war, even though that prisoner is part of a country that might have bombed cities and killed people who wound up burning alive, whatever, uh, they don't then put them in a cage and do to them what uh, these barbarians did to the pilot. Uh, they're, they're civilized countries and people act differently. But you say this is okay because this is what Muhammad would have wanted? No, in fact, uh, when you say civilized, uh, you know, your criteria for civilized means uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 2,000 killed in Gaza is civilized for you. But for Muslims, this is not civilized. We don't adopt the Geneva Convention. We don't okay. adopt the United Nations, which gave away the land of Palestine to the Jews, which right. they didn't have a right to right, do. Right, right. We've been this through that already. Criteria. We've been through this that already. You couldn't name a Muslims. Palestinian leader or a king or a president or a prime minister uh, of that land. But, but that, I, I want to ask you, you mentioned that you mentioned uh, Sharia, you mentioned uh, Muhammad. So I'm asking you, is this, this is, this is uh, condoned by Muhammad? This is what Muhammad te taught and would teach? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> We worship Allah, we don't worship the Messenger Muhammad, uh, wasallam. <clears throat> but of course his sayings and actions are evidence for us. And I will say to you that there are different rules depending on the type of jihad that you're fighting. Now if you're fighting offensive jihad, which is called jihad mubada, there are different rules. Usually you don't pollute the water, for example, you don't cut the trees, you don't attack uh, you know, uh, the monks, the farmers, and so on. But in defensive jihad, jihad dafa, which is what is taking place here, People are defending themselves against America and other, other bombardments. All right, so, so what you're saying is, so I, I'm just trying to get an answer, which is sometimes yeah, difficult. Yeah, I'm coming to the answer. Yeah, but so is, it, is this justified? This is this justified in your well, in your... well, let me just make this one point, that in defensive jihad, there are different rules. And uh, in, in, in this kind of a scenario, whatever the Muslims can do within the realms of acceptable behavior, they are doing. And part of that is terrorizing the enemy. And sometimes, you know, as the war policy... The, the fatwa could be given to the emir of jihad in the area to do certain things which you may not find palatable. This happened in Somalia. Uh, but, but, uh, I, I remember, have, remember Mr. Chowdhury, you said, you, you just said, you just said, an example in Somalia, all right, you, all right, the I, Americans were dragged by All right, I, I've heard, the, let, me, let me get a question. You just said within the rules of acceptable behavior. So I ask you again, the burning of this man in the manner in which it was done, do you, is, to you, is this acceptable behavior? Is this justified? Well, let me tell you what is not acceptable and then we can narrow it down. Raping people is not acceptable. You know what the CIA did with no, Guantanamo yeah, 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 Bay. Why, you know, I, you know, I, 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 why is it? Yeah. Why is it? I'm, well, I'm, I'm being very. Wait, 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 wait a second. I'm being very polite to you. I'm being very. I'm being very polite. 
I'm being very polite to you, and I'm asking you a question, and you're incapable. You're incapable of answering a question. Is this you're justified? You're incapable of listening to the answer. If you listen to the answer, no, no. maybe you know you will understand something. Allah gave you two ears and one mouth. Listen more be before you know you speak. I'm trying to give you the answer, but you're just not interested. I know, I, I know. You speak in riddles. You're so bright. You're so better than us and so well, more, well, so superior to, to us. It's beneath you to give an answer yeah, directly. Then, you know, you all, have to make us think. All world. right, I, I can't. Hey, but you'll like this one, uh, Mr. Chowdhury. You know who's coming up next on this show? America's rabbi, Rabbi Shmuley Boteik. I'm sure you'll be tuned in for that, sir. Thanks for being with us and saying nothing as usual. We're coming back.